<sighs> Guys, imagine the situation. You know, you've made it across. Um, they let you know women and children uh, on the trains and to, to exit, you know, without a problem. Um, but the husband, her son, who I'm assuming is over 18, they just, you know, he's stuck. Hey guys, today I am going back to Ukraine, or at least the border of Ukraine. And I'm going to be joined with two new friends that I have who wanted to come help out and try to raise some money for uh, those who are escaping the war in Ukraine. Let me introduce you to Dan Leal and Candy Alexa. You might actually recognize their faces. Dan, Alexa, where, where are we going today? We are going to the border, the Hungarian-Ukrainian border. For, uh, to raise awareness and for this fundraiser that we're going to be doing for the uh, refugees, which we're very excited about, and yeah. uh, all the money will be going to medical and food essentials. Hope we can adopt a pet. You want to help a pet? Yeah, I want to help a pet. It's people and pets. People and people uh, sure and pets. Pet. And we have room in the car, so if someone wants to ride back to Budapest, we can help. Yeah. Them as well. <laughs> and this is our trusty rental Opal here. And, of course, luckily I can drive manual. I never thought I would come back here, but <laughs> this is where I crossed. By, by a miracle, we had four places we could pick uh -huh. for border towns, and this is the one that you had been to before, Zohani. You didn't even know you'd been here. Yeah, but you know what? Honestly, it was such a blur when I was here. I no, was exhausted. Now you're, you're back, back where you started. Yeah. Life has come full circle. So let's go see uh, who we can help, who we can interview, exactly. and what's going on here in the, the literally the border of Ukraine again. All right, so we are here at the train station and I think these tents are set up with some help. Let's take a look to see what they're up to here. Here we have some uh, volunteers in here. We even have vegan sandwiches for people who are crossing. Hello. Was there many people from Ukraine crossing today? Uh, how many people are crossing the border? Yeah, today. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's a lot. Uh, 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 train is in late, in one hour, it's gonna arrive more people. In one hour? Yeah. Okay, okay, perfect, perfect coming. Yeah. Because it's in uh, train is in late. One and a half, uh, one and a half thousand. One one thousand five hundred people. One thousand five hundred. Wow. People arrive, but approximately, we should say. Oh, they have a kids uh, station there. So this is for the kids. When they come, they can have uh, toys and some uh, coloring books and things. Is that goulash? Let's go. Let's go find. Let's go take a look. Wow. So we have nice soup for when people are coming across. Pate. Pate as well. Pate. And a big is this goulash? goulash. Wow, yeah. that's very nice. How many liters? Twenty liters. Twenty liters. Or more. Who's who's one liter? Uh, high, 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 high liter. Many liters. 
Sauce goose. Uh, sauce goose. Sauce goose? 120. 120 liters. That goulash looks really good. 120 liters. So yeah. we got three, we got four different languages we're going to be taking here. Yeah. Russian, Hungarian, American. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, yeah. we don't speak, we don't speak English, yeah. that's for sure. I will be honest. I was tempted to try some of that, that goulash soup because she offered to it. us. Yeah. But, but yeah. I, don't, I can't steal it. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to take it from, from the RPGs, even though I'm sure they well, have two audience. See right now, but yeah? right now th this is the okay. calm before the storm. There's going to be 1,500 refugees here shortly. What's it say? Thank you. Oh, nice. I love, okay. I love. Oh, with love. Thank you very much. So we have snacks and food for everyone. Baby food. And toys for everyone. Toys. And toothbrushes. It's really nice. When I was here two weeks ago, yeah. all they had were these cold refugee sandwiches. So there's, there's, there's the refugee game has been up. Yeah. Really nice. So there were things have gotten much, much better. Uh, as far as I want to say that was the best sandwich I've ever had in my life. I still think about it today. And no, guys, I didn't come all the way to the border again just to have another one. You didn't even know you were coming to this. I know. Wow. This looks so different. Yeah. So, so the sandwiches were lined up here, and there was another station here. We basically just sat here for like a couple hours while waiting. But now it looks like they have like strollers and stuff for kids. Wow. Let's take a look. Well, they've got a lot of yeah, so for the families coming through, if they need like strollers, need if they need baby food, if they need a place to rest. We have some medicine, we have uh, feminine products as well, car seats even. And all this was donated. Things have definitely like 100% uh got more organized and approved since i was here like this was literally the bench that i, I sat on and then we we're waiting for our our train and now it's a little baby play area it's like really really nice now and this was a restaurant that was closed last time but now it looks like it's a open cafe even so i don't know if this is like drinks for volunteers but it's nice everything is like completely open now there's hot soup everywhere there's even a, a place uh, for clothes, uh, some <laughs> panties, some t-shirts if anyone needs anything. All right, so what's so going right on? right now, it looks like the people have enough, but you gotta remember, there's 1,500 people coming. And there's nowhere near enough food for that many. Not to mention, most of these people have been coming with nothing, or maybe like a suitcase, and they're coming from a war zone, so that's why we really need your guys' help and effort because they might get something now that they're coming here. But think about it. That's probably, this is their first hot meal in days for a lot of them. And then they're going to be going to a, a country where they don't speak the language because Ukrainians and Hungarian, there's zero similarity between the languages. Uh, no job, no prospects, you know, and they're coming into this country with Hungary, which has taken in over 200,000 Ukrainians already and taking more every day. It's another 1,500 right now. And these are coming constantly every day. So that's why we really need your help and effort to try to raise funds so we can help all these people that come off these trains, not just when they get here, but after, so we can give them you know, medicine and food and things like that, because uh, they're gonna need a lot of help. And uh, this is truly, you know, this is a true tragedy. I mean, imagine the entire population of Paris being displaced or Philadelphia, and that's what's happened. Three million people have been displaced, left, you know, because of the Russian invasion. That's the situation we're in. So we have a nice dog here. Hello. Is your dog? Yes. Oh, oh nice. Nice dog. <laughs> yeah, so what Dan said was, was absolutely correct, where even though, to be honest, most people who are across the border right now, the last thing they're even thinking about is having food or, you know, or clothes, um, because they've just gone through it could be up to nine days to cross the border, you know, depending on where they're coming from, uh, how they're getting here. And, you know, for me, I'm, honestly, I was very fortunate, I was very lucky that even though it was 30 hours of a very difficult, you know, uh, cr crossing, it was very stressful. 
it was only 30 hours. Imagine that times four. Like, I can't even imagine, like, when people were sleeping in their cars or waiting outside in the cold for 10 hours. And this is, you know, you know women, children, like, you know, uh, grandparents, everybody. Um, so even though it's nice that here on the border, they are giving, you know, some food, they're giving some water, they're giving some supplies. To be honest, most people aren't thinking about it right now. They're just so happy that they crossed into Hungary, into the EU. What they're really thinking about is getting settled, getting into a home, getting somewhere where they can, you know, at least get a few nights of, of sleep. So, you know, we came here to get as close to Ukraine as possible. Um, let's kind of see how things have changed and improved. Hopefully meet some uh, people who are crossing to see how long these borders are now. But definitely the help that we can really give are to people who are still in Ukraine that don't have access to things like this. Uh, and also to people who want to settle. They, they, they want a place to, to live uh, and rebuild a home. So I don't know when the next train is coming, but sounds like something is going on. Uh, but how long did it take? Uh, uh, no, Oh, really? What happened? Yeah. Uh, it was uh, like this kind of bombing. Wow. Yeah. Sibonia? Yeah. Oh, so no, 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 uh, now we find just, um, no, 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 no. Okay, less than an hour, half an hour. And then how long did it take for them at CHOP border to stamp? Eighteen minutes from CHOP to here. Just one hour? Okay. It's gone better. Okay, that's fast. Yeah, that's much faster. Okay. So who got a ticket? Uh -huh. they, uh, they can take a train faster and now we're waiting for our people who is buying tickets so when it's a uh, train is will be full mm -hmm. they're gonna start but it's just 18 minutes. Okay. 18, 18 minutes to drive yeah it's very close i understand yeah you want to drive to chop? If you want to cross border uh, by car, it's like four kilometers uh, long line. Yeah. So how many hours do you think? Oh, it could take like maybe one day. Wow. To drive. Wow. Okay. To drive. To drive. Because drive. they want to cross the border and pick up, I guess, family. Yeah. And he say I do not recommend you to yes. cross border by car. Okay, it makes because sense. Because you can uh, cross border from here very fast, like just... Oh, yeah. By train. By, no, by, 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 by car. By car you can cross the border yeah. from So you here. can go to but Ukraine on easily. Way back, yeah. On the way back, you're gonna stuck. Mm. Everyone's gonna stuck. So I absolutely understand why this woman is thinking, okay, it's so close, it's 18 kilometers, nine miles. Let's just go there, pick up our family, come back. 
but it's good that she asked because they have, still to, wait. Get stuck in the yeah, they have to wait for one day. Yeah. Or so maybe longer. Yeah. maybe longer. So while the trains are still running, it's by far the best way to cross. Uh, if it, if I wasn't to cross by train, it would have taken days instead of you know, four hours. Three, three, or three, three miles. Or back. So thank you so much to the train operators who are working during these hard times. They're really the ones, they're ones really saving us still. I was on this exact same train two weeks ago and it was like 90% empty. And this one is completely full, it's packed. These people see their family members, their friends. So the reason why no one's gone off yet is the border guards are going to go up, or basically immigration is going to go up and stamp everyone in, into the EU. There's two border crossings, remember? Uh, the first is to leave Ukraine, which is the one that we had uh, a lot of problems with people cutting in line and a four hour wait. I've heard they fixed that now. Now it's less than an hour, which is really good. And the uh, on the Hungary side, they were always good. They basically would get on the train check our passports, stamp us in, and it was easy. So this is the very first family to get off uh, this train. The border guards are still going to be on the train stamping everyone else in. Um, so it's going to be a bit of a process. But welcome to Hungary, and I hope they will uh, be safe. There's a ton of people here. There's people who are volunteering, there's translators, there's journalists, there's photographers, uh, and there's people waiting for their families as well. So it's nice that we have some uh, volunteers with people with the baggage. And she's like helping. Don't be dead. Welcome. Well, they even have like shoulders for the kids too, like to give away, to give away food and to give water. So people are really getting taken care of. So I noticed a lot of uh, people are crossing this direction. Place. I'm not sure exactly what's happening, but what I'm assuming is anyone that doesn't have a passport that can let them into Hungary normally uh, goes through there first to get like a special uh, slip or permission. Uh, the people that have a passport uh, to the EU. Uh, they can go and just get train tickets and get right back on the train. You also have to get the paper that lets them stay for three years. Oh, maybe that's what it is. Because yeah. anyone who's a refugee who's coming right now, there's the hungry has got a program where they can stay for three years. So I have to give them special paperwork, special stamps and everything. So that lets them stay here in the EU for three years. Oh, so maybe that's what it is. Yeah, it, it could be where the people who are just transiting... Transiting, you can... They, they just get, get on the train. And the people who want to stay, stay in Hungary, Hungary they're going to get the paperwork done there. I, I do like that it's really organized now, though. Like it's it was not like this at all just a few uh, a few weeks ago. So things are really really improving and really getting so much better. So we have some volunteers who are helping and asking, uh, do you have a place to live? Do you know where you're gonna go uh, now and after this? Even just to take a foot, and uh, they say it about five twenty. Something is going somewhere, but uh, I missed what okay, it's probably going to Budapest. And maybe to Budapest, or maybe somewhere. So lots of volunteers here. We have people uh, waiting in line. They even have a food truck set up now. But we're gonna go inside and see how people are doing. So now we have a lot of people coming through at once. I wonder if. The immigration kind of just... Yeah, it's good. Wow. So they, yeah, I think they realized they got to hurry up and let people in. Because it's taking way too long. Oh, yes. He has a little cake. Oh, privit. Что это? Уроне ты будет все пропадет. Oh, wow. 
Мы же не выпускаем без его документов. А муж это моя семья. У меня больше кроме него и еще одного сына больше никого нема. И вы мне не рассказывайте, как мне жить. Мужа желание. Это мое желание поехать и забрать своих близких. Стоите, улыбайтесь. Не могу. Не надо мне ваше пути. Не могу. Мужа желание. Муж выполняет мои желания, а не я его. So Хочет обратно на Украину, все. Потому что муж там. Пожалуйста, заберите ее от меня. Уберите ее. Да идет кому-то помогать. Мне не надо. Мне ее помощь не нужна. Я ее не звала и не просила. Какая-то приемная. Скажите, что я не понимаю его. Приемнутая. Я ее не просила. Объясните, что я не просила ее прийти. Что она пришла? Wow, this is a really tough situation. So I think is the babushka staying or no? She's, she's like a volunteer or something like this. Okay. She, uh, she, uh, she don't ask help from from uh, oh, older oh. one, oh. and she say like I don't need your help to so go away. Oh wow! And she asked like uh, send her away. So, but so she's the one that wants to go back. She yeah. wants she wants to go back <sighs> because she don't want to leave your family. Yeah. yeah. I know it's a tough situation because like her husband. Her husband is there, you know? It breaks my heart. Okay. Guys, this is like so terrible. I mean, families are being torn apart. Where she's safe here in Hungary. She's in the EU. There's, you know, she can stay here with her kids. husband and son can't leave because they're anyone 18, everyone 18 to 60 is not allowed to leave Ukraine. Yeah. And a Ukrainian man has to stay and fight. And she's upset because her husband is there and her son is there fighting. She wants to go back and fight with them. Yeah. She can't go back, obviously. She's got a little, so, a little child. It's too dangerous. No, it's too dangerous. She can't go back. Yeah. And you told her that's too dangerous and she yeah. doesn't. But I also understand. Like, I mean, the, 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 I feel so bad for this kid. He has no idea what's happening. He knows his mother is upset. You know, she wants to. She, I know she wants the best, right? Like, like obviously she cares so much about her husband. She cares so much about her son. She wants to risk her own life to go back. But it's just a bad idea right now. I don't know what to do. I mean, <sighs> so sad. Я буду ждать и по-любому поеду, чтобы там не было. Это моя семья. А вот этот поезд не поедет сейчас туда обратно? Вот, вот он должен ехать мне на, на ЧОП, а потом мне надо будет ЧОП на... на, 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 на бабушка. 18 часов уже. 18 часов. Она ждала. Да. Пожалуйста, меня, я пойду пешком домой. Нет. But don't, no trains are going that direction. They are. They are. But you can't go in. You can go in, but it's a bad idea. It's Wait, possible. You can go in. No. Go. If you want, you can, you can go, go in. You can go back? Yes. Yes, of course. But it's a bad idea. Yeah. Can, can, you, can you tell her that if uh, she's worried about not having a place to stay or money or food, we can no, help her with this? No, she don't want to stay here. She say I don't gonna stay without my husband and without my son. Uh, yeah, that. Where is the hotel? We can look. Uh, yeah, 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 we look. <sighs> Guys, imagine the situation. You know, you've made it across. Um, they let you know women and children uh, on the trains and to, to exit, you know, without a problem. Um, but the husband, her son, who I'm assuming is over 18, they just, you know, he's stuck on the Ukrainian side uh, in Uzara, which is the, the biggest city um, near the border. It's a place that I passed through just two weeks ago. And 
She's been in, waiting here for 18 hours just with her kid. Just waiting, hoping, praying that they get on the next train. But, you know, that he magically gets off of uh, this train and somehow he got on. But, you know, there's almost zero chance of that happening. Um, so now she wants to go back. Imagine going through all that just to escape the war zone and going back voluntarily because she can't be, you know, she doesn't want to be alone with the kid. She doesn't want to be without her husband. She doesn't want to be without her son. I don't know what to do in this situation. Like we, you know, there's, there's a lot of support here to find you know, food, housing, um, jobs. She can be safe, but you know, sometimes your own safety isn't the number one priority. It's, you know, it's the safety of your family, and your kid. Meanwhile, yeah, is that what they said or? No, it's what I see. I know how look international passport of Ukraine. Ah, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So in Ukraine, there's a few different types of IDs. Um, Just the Ukrainian passport? Yeah. So there's the one that's like just for being, it's almost like ID Ukraine. card inside Ukraine. There's another one uh, international. that they can travel with internationally. And then you, they, now they have also the card as well. ID card. An ID card. I so, don't know about it. Yeah. So it could be up to three different types of ID now, but they call all of them passport, which is a bit confusing. But that's, that explains why a lot of people have to go through this office first to get permission to, to stay in EU and Hungary, while some people can just go you know, take it straight back on the train. All right, so she just uh, came back. We were watching her stuff for a while while she went to the, the, the toilet and first smoke. Okay. So now dad's going to give her uh, his phone so she can use Viber to try to call her husband. Maliki uh, Mushina. Let's stay here. Try again. Oh, you understand? Yeah, Pinamai Porushki. Yeah. Not everything. Yeah, only what I want to understand. <laughs> It's like a train, it's like a gum. It's a lot of people. gonna give her some money. It must be so hard to be a, a, you know, now a single mother, basically. Not by choice. You know, yesterday she wasn't, you know. She said, please give me her a bit more. Just in case she needs something, you know. Um, can you tell her that it's she, she can get a, a free place to stay and yes, free food? She knows, she know, but she don't want to stay. But tell her it's good to like to no, think about she, it for one day, take a rest, no, and she, then go back she tomorrow. Go back now. It's she so tough. She's waiting. She wanna go now. Yeah. This train is going. Where can she go? Okay. Well, we tried to, um, you know, rationalize with her a bit and say. It's dangerous to go back, um, but at the end of the day, it's her decision. You know, it's it's a tough decision. There's no right um, answer. Um, the only thing we can do is try to be supportive, try to uh, try to let her know she has options. So she needs a, a free place to stay and food and you know and, you know and money. To, she has it, but at the end of the day. Maybe it's not about that. It's about being with the family, being with the, the, the husband, being with the son, even if it's more dangerous. Uh, so you've spoken to her, and she said she would rather be in a bomb shelter in Ukraine than stay here. Yeah, alone. then stay here without husband and uh, second son. You know. So she wanna go back now. Yeah. She wanna take a uh, train back and go. So I think um, there's nothing we can we can do, but we can try to support her. Uh, Dad's giving her some Hungarian money in case she wants to come back. I think I still have some Ukrainian uh, grievna, which will help her when she gets when she gets there. 
can you tell her like we wish her uh, good luck back in uh, in Ukraine and we hope uh, she stays safe. Yeah. Uh, Good luck with everything, okay? So she's gonna go and ask when the next train uh, to Budapest is gonna be. Uh, Dan has become a babysitter to make sure he's gonna be okay. Yeah, Johnny. Skazichi Pajalsta. Koktibia Zavut. Timama da Patashti Timama. Patashti. Okay. So the mom is back and the, you got the tickets. Yeah, but ticket with train is when everyone gets out. Mm -hmm. Train going. Wow, so she's really gonna go back? Yes. Oh. So what we did was we we sent a, a voicemail to um, her husband. She's explaining to him that she, she's going back. I have to wait for her. <laughs> tell me, tell me what, what is happening. Okay, he's so cool. He met here, uh, made uh, all way from Austria uh -huh. to meet his ex-wife. Wow. And his son, his son and his son, his son. Uh, son of them uh -huh. uh, make a fly from Sweden. 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 Uh -huh. So they're gonna sleep overnight uh, in uh, Budapest, uh -huh. and after he go back to Austria, uh -huh. and son uh, take mom and go to Sweden. Wow. Good luck. Good luck. И то, что я увидел сегодня, я, ну, знаете, горе у нас но, понятно, но как к нам относятся но, люди, очень хорошо, с пониманием. Извините, я she немножко... Said, she said he's so happy how people is like welcome, 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 Просто не объяснимо, просто объяснимо. Все настолько организовано, люди настолько понимающие, ну просто... Ребята, извините, я немножко... Ничего, сейчас увидите меня, конечно, извините, что я вам скажу, но два пидораса меряются. All right, so it's been uh, about over an hour, but people are still arriving. And then we're going to now try to get some medicine for her. She was asking if any uh, pharmacies were open. And we said, we think inside they have uh, many things that she might need. So, so I think this one doesn't have it, but there's another one just here that might have it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think they brought her to this little medical uh, area, right? Wow, that's good that they have it. So they're going to help her out before she comes back. If you were in her situation, would you go back to Ukraine no, right now? No. It's, it's too dangerous, right? Yeah, because at least half family could be safe. It doesn't yeah. matter if you have money or not, but a lot of people can help here. Yeah. yeah. And I understand, you know, she doesn't want to be without her her husband and her son, but she has one son here. Yes, but she's it could healthy. Happen, like uh, an old family will be like, okay, I don't want to say. Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's a tough situation because it's either she, like, she and her son can stay here, be alive, be safe. Uh, it'll be a struggle, but at the same time, there's a lot of help. There's a lot of people here to help. Yeah. You know. Uh, like in Ukraine, like no one gonna help each other. They can't because it's not about not wanting to. It's just that, like the the resources are not there. It's hard to get food there. It's hard to get medicine there. Uh, that's why we're we're trying to raise money to send food and medicine there. But it's hard. <laughs> Hello, Pivit. Dobi Dian. Yeah. Uh, how was their journey? It was so hard. Yeah. But where? Dnipropetrovsk. 
Yeah. Okay, and how, how long did it take to arrive? One day. One day, 24 hours? Yeah. Wow. Uh, and what are their plans now? So she's she's uh, lucky. She has a husband in Budapest. Oh, okay. He waiting for her. Yes, if there's such a problem, I'm here in Ukraine. I also worked there, I also visited. Yes, yes. So we're here. Yes. We're here. Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, and these are her, her kids? How many? Four kids. Uh, Skoka? Chichiri uh, Etimonoga. On best problem, um, is he 18? How, how did he come? Uh, no, he's not 18. No, okay. We're under 18. Okay. Uh, uh, you don't see? No, <laughs> it's a machine. <laughs> no, it's a machine. It's a machine. They eat a lot. Okay, I'm good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, how was their journey? Uh, she says it was very difficult because it was a very long journey and it was very long, you know, waiting time on the train. Uh, so everywhere it was uh, uh, long waiting time. How long did they take? Four hours. Four hours on chop train station. Uh -huh. Same as me. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then in total, where did she come from? From Zakarpatia, uh, Zakarpatia. Oh, near Old Delhi. From small city. Okay. Not too far. Okay. And what is your plan now? Ah, okay. She pick up a daughter, uh, and she work in Kishkamete in Hungary. Uh -huh. So she just pick up a kid uh -huh. and went back. So she went back to Ukraine. She went to pick up a kid. Uh huh. Uh, and went back wow. to Hungary. So she work in Hungary. Okay. So how, how was it difficult for her to go from Hungary to Ukraine? She say like to get from here to Ukraine is very easy because like not really a lot of no people one wants to go. Yeah. Uh, wanna go, so it's okay. easy. Okay, I'm happy that your daughter is here and you're safe. Safe is how to say. There's probably a spikoni. Just say just spikoni. Spikoni. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm happy that it seems like at least for the, the people that we spoke to, they have, have plans. Um, but it, I'm sure there's so many people that don't have a place to go, what to do, you know. Yeah, but some of them, like who is like I think from the Karpati, from this part, they uh, everyone has a place and work in Hungary. You know, I think some people they live in uh, Ukraine in border with Hungary because it's cheaper to live there and work in Hungary. It's same like you know, for example, Hungarians they uh, live here, but they work in Austria because it's better salary and everything. Yeah, and prior to this war, it was pretty easy to, to go back and forth. There was a direct train. Uh, didn't take us long, but now it seems like if you guys for some reason want to go to Ukraine to volunteer or to 
you know, pick someone up. It's possible to go there. It's easy to go there. She said before it was more difficult to get to Ukraine than now. Wow. Last year. Yeah, it's probably because nobody is going there now. It's, you know, literally going to, to war zone. Yeah, I'm going to be a correspondent. Yes, they gave us everything. Now, show her the show. Yes. Okay, good. Come here, come Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so. I'm happy. Yeah, we're done. Oh, it's better. That's it, Daniel. Oh, I'm so happy that they finally uh, reunited and they were able to, he's able to help. Yeah. I know it's not. I think she should be going back. Yeah. She's made a mind up. So, we gotta, yeah. So, I think finally, after about two hours, they finished stamping everyone in. Uh, so, this train's gonna go back to Ukraine. She's gonna go reconnect with her husband, even though she went to a war zone. Yeah. She wants to do it. <sighs> what to do, right? What to do? So this nice family is going to go to Canada. Ocha Priyana. Good luck in Canada. Spasiba. Ocha Priyana. Bye. Ciao. So I was speaking to them uh, inside. There's seven of them. And they're thinking of maybe going to Canada to look for work. Bye bye. Paka paka. And they're thinking about to go to Canada to work. Um, but they don't really know. You know, I told them uh, that I have friends in Slovakia that can help them get a job. So now we're considering that. So we exchange contacts. Uh, what's going on, guys? What's the update? So, back to Ukraine. Made to train. Yeah. And I think this is it. This is everybody. It's like we've been here for three, four hours even. Yeah. Who the best? Who the best? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tom. Yeah. Tom. Tom. And the train is going back to Budapest now, so I think we are as well. Yeah, I'm back. Uh, any last kind of final words, guys? I mean, this just shows you know that poor lady, you know, is a perfect example. This is the reality of what you know Putin's war is doing. You know, she's got so between bad situation and a bad situation. She wants to be with her husband who can't leave because he's a soul, you know got he's out of fight. And, yeah. So she's going back into a war zone with a one year old child. Yeah, that's hard. One year, one and a half year old. Yeah. Oh, it's hard. Candy, thank you so much for helping in your translation. You've been amazing. And uh, for people who know, uh, you, you are from Russia. Yeah. Yeah. So, but no, it's, it's, it's good. It's, it's showing that like not every okay, Russian. My granddad is Ukrainian. Yeah, okay. <laughs> But not every Russian person is bad and for the war. And my best friend is Ukrainian yeah. as well. That's good. And now we have new friends who are Ukrainian as well. Yeah. So that is it, guys. We're going to be going on the long drive back to Budapest. Um, I hope we were able to show you guys a little bit of, of what it's like now here on the border, that there's still people coming every day, thousands of people coming every day, people that need help. So if you can donate, please do. It's going to help people both that have arrived, but really more importantly, we're going to try to get the money to people who are still in Ukraine who really need it uh, the most. Dan, Candy, thank you so much. Thank you. You guys have been amazing. Thanks. And thank you. God bless. See you next time in Ukraine when everything is over. Yeah. Because I have some favorite places in Ukraine. Yeah, when Ukraine back, opens back up, uh, Ukraine Shampanski is on me, guys. We have a pilmini. on me. All you can eat. In Varenichne. In Varenichne. In Borsh. Yes, in Borsh. Lots of Borsh. Brought up growing on stick shift. Yeah. yeah. That's my seatbelt. <laughs> oh, it's the red shake. Hungarian police. So for whatever reason, Dan's seatbelt thing keeps going off, even though it's clear to plugged in. 
Well, now it's having an ox. Now it's having an ox. Now it's go. Go, go. No, put it on, put it on. I'm not, put it on. Put it on. Put it on. I, won't I don't want to be, I won't die. You might. You know, you haven't seen me try. I, I trust you. I have faith. I have faith. I have faith. We're not going to die. You might. I put this thing on. I'm not that good of a driver. It puts this in beef thing on the angle. Okay, so it's, yeah, start thinking we're doing it. Look, that's okay. Okay. You ready? Now we're ready. Even Mickey Mouse is uh, yeah. cooked in just in case. Alright, let's go. Now let's go. What? See? It's the seatbelt. Oh, man. Oh, you ordered this? It was this heat break. It's a Coke can is here. Ah! Uh, <laughs> That was a problem. Why are we putting a, um... My double shot of energy coffee. Yeah, but it's like a terrible place for them to put a, uh, a cup over. <laughs> we'll this break and then back in the car. <laughs> yeah, this is... Nothing. Zero. Is that a spot in there? Oh my god, bro. <laughs> <laughs> got excited. Uh, yeah, yeah, like... I got excited. We, we were driving for almost three hours, and this is basically what we saw. This is all that's in the spot of Hungry. Zero, zero, zero. Yeah. This is a Blair Witch Forest. Yeah. Some fields. A field of dirt. Yeah. That's it. So you go from Bruder Pass to... Country. Nothing. They no, say, no, they, they no, say. No, there's no suburbs. Yeah, they no, said that zero, like zero suburbs. Outside of Budapest, there's a couple suburbs. So. Zero. Thank you to all the people in Ukraine, and thank you to all of you, the supporters.